London, hello. My video for March 24th, all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My substance, alcohol. My behaviour could be equally addictive around people, places and things. Being with the right people, in the right place, with the right things. Always about being right. And over the years I realised there is no real, there is no real challenge in that. Uh, fitting in, in and conforming and being a part of something that we don't necessarily like we're just, just doing it because we think we ought to life is more interesting when we start to get into uh, learning that life is all about freedom of choices and living well to good conscience so my video for t March 24th is uh, all about recovery from addiction to substance behaviour alcohol behaviour, trying to be perfect, never so full of fear, trying to fix myself, trying to make life work, very trying person and I've just spent a few minutes making a video realising I hadn't turned the darn video on, which I think is very funny, it made me laugh when I looked at the screen and thought, hang on a minute, all I've done is take a photograph and uh, all my wisdom has been lost into the ether, so I've had to start again. So my video is about recovery. <clears throat> admitting mistakes, uh, keep on learning with humility. Just, I think that is the, the most perfect situation to be in, to have humility and to keep on learning that I'm just learning how to live one day at a time, soberly and not drinking. So what helped me along the way? What kept me alive long enough to find a way out? Because I couldn't do it on my own, absolutely couldn't do it on my own, or, nor with the encouragement of family. The family did keep me alive, uh, medical professionals, the National Health Service, and it was just blinking hard work. I didn't know how to stop drinking. And in the end, self-will did not work, willpower did not work, self-will became self-will run riot and obsession, and the more it became obsessive, the more my mind was closed down the more frightened I got because I just couldn't stop doing something which was killing me and put me in hospital more than once. So what is it that has helped me retain one day at a time sobriety? Well it's a fellowship, it's called AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. It's full of unique authentic people so therefore it, it does, not, does not want spokespeople for it. So I don't speak for AA, I only speak about my recovery and how AA helps me. So I know when I go to a meeting of AA, what I see is what I get, the good and the bad, the wisdom of life, living life sober. So this is not a promotion video because life, it, it won't work. AA cannot fix you. We learn how to live one day, not fixing because fixing is what we always did to make ourselves feel better when life was either good or bad have a drink, have another drink and have another one and another one to the point where we couldn't stop so what is AA and how does it help me there was a small card in my hand, this one upon which are, is the AA preamble inside it has the 12 steps and 12 traditions which are very handy just in case I forget them and it has the serenity prayer on the back which is about what I can do and what I can't do and learning the wisdom to know the difference so I, I start with the AA preamble so that you know and I know what I'm talking about and I share about AA I don't talk about people as individuals uh, anonymity is sacrosanct in the rooms of AA so that we can find the truth of who we are and once we've found the truth we learn how to love each other in the nicest possible way, we learn how to love people, how to be loved back, and how to let wisdom in from others. And so that's my higher power, truth, love and wisdom, and some call it God. And I have no problem with the word God anymore. I'm so glad about that, because it bugged me forever that in my intellectual days of trying to think out what the world was, it was very frustrating because I still haven't got a clue how the universe works. So I'm very happy today. Alcoholics Anonymous. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. 
The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So the good news is you can keep all your affiliations. And I don't say that in a glib way. <coughs> we, have, we have affiliations, we have faith, we have religion, or no religion, depending on our outlook. And that's what's important, to retain one's unique, authentic outlook and develop personal choices around the reality in which we live. That's what it's about for me. So when AA says it's not allied to anything, and it's only about a desire to stop drinking, and it's free at the point of uh, sale, actually it's not sale, and it's about helping other people, that's what it is. Twelve steps to learn how to live life, live life one day at a time, and twelve traditions around unity, service and recovery. And it's anonymous because we need a place to find the truth of who we are. And truth for me is one of these spiritual principles. Seeing the truth of now as best I can, being open to it, and with humility to keep on learning. That way, it is a spiritual program. So I get to know what my feelings are today. I understand that spiritual for me is coping with reality, everything and learning more about it as I go. So I don't have to have the answers anymore. I don't have to react badly or as I think I ought to act. I can think about it today and know what my feelings are and what is possible. So I think that's really what the programme's about. And what ha helps me when I can't get to meetings, well I do these videos and uh, daily reflections is all about the 12 steps and 12 traditions, one a month of each. So. Step three, a higher power in our lives and letting go and letting good happen, or letting go and letting God help us. So for March 24th, it says here, active, not passive. Man is supposed to think and act. He wasn't made in God's image to be an automaton. Before I joined AA, I often did not think and reacted to people and situations. When not reacting, I acted in a mechanical fashion. After joining AA, I started seeking daily guidance from a power greater than myself and learning to listen for that guidance. Then I began to make decisions, decisions and act on them, rather than react to them. The results have been constructive. I no longer allow others to make decisions for me and then criticise me for it. Today and every day, with a heart full of gratitude and a, a desire for God's will, to be done through me. My life is worth sharing, especially with my fellow alcoholics. After all, if I, if I do not make a religion out of anything, even AA, then I can be an open channel for God's expression. Now isn't that good? So it's not about religion and it's not about AA being a religion, it's about actually being a channel for what is possible by letting the world back in when we've been shut down for a long time or reacting and trying to fix ourselves and after all uh, any alcoholic who really is an al well is there one more than one type of alcoholic I don't know that there is if we can't stop drinking uh, and we're trying to fix the way we feel then we are in addiction and the way out of it is stop fixing start listening and have the humility to learn a bit more about life and what is possible with the reality around us. And often we want to push things faster and it doesn't, doesn't work because we have to put in the hard work each and every day and it, then it's not hard work and it's like M. Scott Peck said when uh, he wrote the book Less Travelled, the first sentence is life is difficult and once we accept that life is difficult, it's not difficult anymore, it's just about endeavour endeavouring each day to make the best of what we have and sometimes as in my past experience when I was homeless and had nothing and I would not even ring my family to let them know where I was or what was happening to me self-pride I don't know what it was 
I think it's just fear of you know, how on earth could they even look at me where when I look at where I got to myself and you know to be in that state where one prefers to be dead or forgotten and never to go back it's a dreadful place to be I hadn't thought about that until just now for a long time so it's a good thing to do these daily reflections because it up comes a bit of the past and it's not about saying oh I don't want to talk about that I don't want to tell people just how bad it got sometimes I need to it's about being truthful about just how dreadful it got and uh, cracking jokes with the priest who's come to give you extreme unction or the less rites is not a good idea although sometimes it does strike me as very funny anyway as Bill sees it this one I've been dipping into page 15 no particular order but it's about eternal values and for me that's truth, love and wisdom eternal values trying to find out what the truth is of now how to love people and how to be loved back and the wisdom that comes that comes to me from other people or from any source not necessarily it's uh, not invented here is what I've got to remember anyway eternal values many people will have no truck at all with absolute spiritual values perfectionists they say are either full of conceit because they fancy they have reached some impossible goal in other words they feel that they've reached a, a different level of spiritual Well, maybe they have for themselves. I never thought about it that way, actually, because I, you know, I, I've always thought that every every experience is spiritual because it's happening in the moment of now, and learning to cope with now without a drink inside me or trying to fix it is really what I've learned. Or else they are swamped in self-condemnation because they have not done so. So the trouble with spiritual is we don't know what the perfect state is, nor can we ever know what it is. It's not, it's not achievable. I might be de de deluded, you never know, do you? Anyway, yet I think this is Bill speaking, and as Bill speak, as Bill sees it. Yet I think we should not hold this view. It is not the fault of great ideals that they are sometimes misused and some and so become shallow excuses for guilt, rebellion, and pride. On the contrary, we cannot grow very much unless we constantly try to envision what the eternal spiritual values are. So, I do envision them as truth, love and wisdom, but I'm sure there's more to it than that. Am I? I don't know yet. But that's a good thing. Day by day we try to move a little towards God's perfection. So we need not be consumed by maudlin guilt for failure to achieve His likeness and image by Thursday next. Indeed, not in this lifetime for me. Or many how many lifetimes would it take to actually understand the nature of the universe providence and all of that progress is our aim and his perfection is the beacon light years away that draws us on so for those well yes of course but in the meantime if we can actually hook into truth love and wisdom from other people and also not be scared of the idea that there may be a God or there may not be a God depending on your belief system it's absolutely right for you whatever you believe in is right for you and it works as long as we understand we're not the higher power uh, because once we think we are the higher power then conceit, ego and all the other, other things come in because we tell people what to do and the whole thing about this particular March 24th seems for me to be, be about freedom of choice to listen when we have been closed down for a long time we can then open up again with humility and start learning about the possibilities based on what is real in front of us, the reality, and also a bit further maybe in terms of goals for the future as we under understand society and what is possible. So life is good today, out there taking photos, out there just being me and learning a little bit more of how it is to be sober and live sober and live life yeah I'm very lucky and I have gratitude you know it's just there it's just a way of being I guess it won't always be like this but it's good that it is tonight or right now so the serenity prayer which I share at the end of these videos about can do can't do and where's the wisdom to know the difference 
seems to be applicable in all situations where whether I'm under pressure or heading for extreme joy without foundation it just pulls me back into the center of what is possible today and now so to a higher power or God or good conscience as you come to understand for yourself that's all it is God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference in the moment always and just for today substance was alcohol so I'm an alcoholic in recovery one day at a time and my behaviour could be equally addictive to work, relationships, materialism, collecting anything to try and fix myself so I felt right about me and life and these days I've realised that trying to fix myself in any way to make myself feel right is not the answer the key these days is simply to be feeling as I am in the moment of now that is understanding what my feelings are how am I feeling why what can I do so that I can make some choices or understand and accept that some things take time so it took me quite a while to become an active 24 7 drinker if you like 35 years to absolutely understand that drink was a fix for me it changed the way I felt changed the way I behaved formed my attitude and, and behavior so these days I realize it's much much more in my favor if I don't drink one day at a time and I try not to fix myself with a palliative that is something outside me so I've had to take some medical medical advice and some medication for inflammation caused by a fracture in my foot and my head says I don't want to take medication because that's fixing myself yet I know the consequences are difficult because I can't do anything if I don't take the medication and the medica medication is there for a purpose it's to stop the swelling and the inflamed uh, tissues around the bones which are mending in my foot at least I hope they're mending and I'll know more on that in a little while another week or so but this is about recovery well recovery and also life happening as life is and as you can hear something's going on outside not quite sure what it is it sounds like they're collecting bottles next door from the restaurant a constant reminder of what I used to do to, to myself to drink myself into a stupor most of the time find oblivion to take the edge off my life because it became intolerable I spent a life trying to look right and realize now it's better to be right no matter what it is to be right in my understanding of me what is going on around me and to face reality so for me reality is my spiritual connection to life living in the now spiritual is as good as it gets it's never better than or worse than anybody else is spiritual life is recognizing what is going on around us and I think like most people I strove for a spiritual understanding which was greater than anything not realizing I'm living it no matter what it is the spiritual can be denial of reality as much as acceptance of reality because it's what we're doing and either we're learning from it or we're hiding from it or doing anything possibly about it it's all spiritual so what helps me keep sober one day at a time well if it wasn't for family community and professionals I wouldn't have had a moment of clarity I wouldn't have been loved enough to actually make it and find a way forward which would help me once dried out find sobriety much more preferable to being drunk or fixing in some way a shallow life not cherishing not understanding and being very superficial and probably indifferent to myself and others as a cause or as a consequence so what helps me a fellowship and that fellowship is AA Alcoholics Anonymous and what it's helped me do is develop my own unique authentic path in recovery living my life and this is the gift everybody remains on their unique authentic path in fellowship yet we have this one similarity yeah we have this one similarity 
that is to be sober and that's it a desire to stop drinking and stay stopped as best we can so fellowship is what I talk about here a lot of the time I'm not a spokesperson for the AA fellowship never can, never will, never want to be it's for unique authentic people speaking for themselves where they choose and there go the bottles <laughs> my constant reminder of where I, where I live and it makes me smile most of the time I don't hark back and think my god I had a wonderful time although I did in some occasions but I can't replicate it again it will never be the same so what is AA uh, I share about this and also the daily reading from the daily reflections and the AA statement of intent or AA preamble shared at every meeting slows me into the moment of now and it goes like this Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So, in essence, this is like a little mini-meeting because that AA preamble, which is on that card, which you can't see too well, is shared at the beginning of every meeting. And then we probably have a reading and then somebody shares. So, the daily reflections for today. I'm having a good day so far, even though there's bottles and noises off this book daily reflections it covers the 12 steps of AA to change my attitude and behavior on a daily basis I can always restart my day at any time knowing where I am and what I can do given my circumstances so it's a bit of a reality check on a daily basis of what is possible and March is all about step three which is letting go and letting good things happen letting people in to help us or letting a higher power help us and I have so many higher powers in my life I couldn't count them and it's just the way it is I learn wisdom from everything so I'm not the host of wisdom I'm just the receiver of wisdom and I share it as best I can so for March 24th all about letting go and letting good things happen it says here active not passive man is supposed to think and act he wasn't made in God's image to be an automaton before I joined AA, I often did not think and reacted to people and situations. When not reacting, I acted in a me mechanical fashion, as I had been taught to or learned. After joining AA, I started seeking daily guidance from a power greater than myself, and learning to listen for that guidance, and often that comes through our good conscience and what we hear from other people. Then I began to make decisions and act on them, rather than react to them. The results have been constructive. I am no longer I no longer allow others to make decisions for me and then criticize me for it. Today and every day, with a heart full of gratitude and a desire for God's will, which is for me seeing the truth of now and responding accordingly, to be done through me. My life is worth sharing, especially with my fellow alcoholics. Above all, if I do not make a religion out of anything, even AA, then I can be open an open channel for God's expression and for me that is actually understanding that God's expression is understanding the truth of now the reality of now not my version not what I think is an automaton or responding or reacting in a mechanical way it's actually actually feeling and thinking about what is going on today so if I don't make a religion out of anything including AA then I can be able to express what I know or receive from others sharing experience, strength and hope and this is the greatest gift for me AA is a fellowship it doesn't have any affiliation it encourage, encourages us to be unique authentic people with this one similarity a desire to stop drinking and share a message of hope so at the end of these videos I will share the serenity prayer which is to God or good conscience to truth, love and the wisdom of others what we learn God grant me grant me the start again God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change 
courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to learn the difference, or know the difference, and accept the difference, and live the difference, just for today. Addiction, addiction either to substance or addiction to behaviour, substance and behaviour, we can be addicted to both or one. I don't know where we make the distinction, but um, my life is far better these days without a drink inside me. I, was, I am an alcoholic in recovery, and I guess I also have certain behaviours as well which could be classified as addictive over the years. Workaholic, relationshipaholic, also gymaholic for quite a number of years trying to combat the impact of drink on my system. So I don't know how much I was in denial all those years, but probably quite a lot of denial and a lot of filters introduced into my head by my thinking, my coping strategies, and uh, you know we, we learn to cope with life. And sometimes that's called the spiritual connection. But when we devise, I suppose, coping strategies beyond the ordinary, beyond dealing with normal life, that is, taking the edge off or just finding oblivion because life feels so awful, then we are in a place of delusion really about our addiction and our behaviour. So ge generally and gradually since I got into the fellowship of AA, that's Alcoholics Anonymous, my life has improved on a daily basis and really what the programme does is suggest that I keep to sober a day at a time and that's how it works, simply one day at a time. We don't make life too big, too small. We don't look back at history and fear it, and we don't make fear what might be our future. We live with what is, and it's seeing the truth of now, and that really is my spiritual connection to now. And it's been a, a difficult time, but before I go into that, um, I am a, a fellow in AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't speak for it, but I share what it has done for me. So please remind, I always remind myself that I don't speak for AA, I just speak from my, from my experience, my strength and hope. And uh, at the beginning of every meeting of AA, and I went to one last night, the preamble is shared and it goes like this. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is the desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy. Neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help others, other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And as you can tell, I've got a cold at the moment. And... Uh, how am I feeling now at the moment? Well, it's, um, I have a funeral to go to in a little while and to pay my respect to somebody who was dear and, and looked after me in my early days and was always about and uh, a guiding hand, if you like, just by their presence and their calmness in the fellowship. And it's a very sad day when we have to say farewell. But I hope and I'm sure that it will be a celebration of the connection this person had to life and what they did and they were a very good person and the gift for me is to be able to get there without a drink inside me and just celebrate another person's life and what they have done so that is all to the good and uh, I'm just generally getting along very carefully with the people in my life I don't want to create resentment in them or anger or frustration I just want to be me and uh, find acceptance of myself and also acceptance of what is today. And uh, in the AA Big Book, uh, there's a passage on acceptance, well, just a paragraph, which I'll just read this one out. It's a longer chapter, but uh, this really sums up where I am right now. And acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. When I am disturbed, it is because I find some person, place or thing, or situation, some fact of my life, unacceptable to me, and I can find no serenity until I accept that person, place, thing or situation as being exactly the way it is supposed to be at this moment. Nothing, absolutely nothing, happens in God's world by mistake. Until I could accept my alcoholism, I could not stay sober, and unless I accept life completely on life's terms, I cannot be happy. I need to concentrate not so much on what needs to be changed in the world, as on what needs to be changed in me and my attitudes. And my 
my, me and my attitudes in the past when faced with um, the prospect of celebrating another person's life, I would fear going there and showing my feelings. And today I don't need to fear sharing my feelings because they're, they're sort of happy, sad reflections about another person and where they are. And the same applies to any particular situation in life. It's life on life's terms, not what I wish it to be or want it to be or would want to exert my willpower over. It's just accepting how things are today. And that illustrates to me where I can make choices. And the simple choices we can make in life are always in the moment of now. Of course, we need some future vision of where maybe we are headed and to do all those things on a day-to-day -day basis which require a little bit of foresight. At the same time, I can find out where I am my feelings, my emotional base, if you like, on a daily basis. And that really enhances my spiritual condition, which is to face the truth of now. And for me, all those things are predicated on trying to keep physically as active and well as I can. So gently I go this, uh, this morning to uh, celebrate the life of another person and what they did for so many and the daily reflection book today, and I feature, I feature this most days on my videos, my daily video, just to give it gives a little bit of inspiration. And uh, for March 24, it said active, not passive. Before I joined AA, I, did, I often did not think and reacted to people in situations. When not reacting, I acted. When not reacting, I acted in a mechanical fashion. After joining AA, I started seeking daily guidance from a power greater than myself and learning to listen for that guidance. Then I began to make decisions and act on them rather than react to them. The results have been constructive. I'm, I no longer allow others to make decisions for me and then criticize me for it. Today and every day, with a heart full of gratitude and a desire for God's will to be done through me, my life is worth sharing, especially with my fellow alcoholics. Above all, if I do not make a, a religion out of anything, even an AA, then I can be, open, be an open channel for God's expression. And as I share often, you know, my way of understanding God, God is truth, God is love, God works through people. And that's my nuts and bolts and practical way of understanding uh, my spiritual connection to now, which is without denials and filters, and accepting there are powers greater than me which uh, from where I can get wisdom and then and then share it or put it into action it is all about action after all so I find a shirt I had to go buy an iron I didn't have one I haven't worn a, a sh an iron shirt for quite a while well not since I suppose November December last year when I went to my last funeral and uh, Fortunately, my brother brought me one. I don't know, didn't have a shirt or a suit to, I suppose, be at these occasions, but at least I have a borrowed one. And the gift is I will turn up as best I can for uh, a good reason. And it's a difficult day. It really is, because I don't know how my feelings are going to, to show or be. It's just as they may be in the moment, and I know what it's like when we actually see a coffin go up the aisle and then the service will start. So, you know, I just realize I'm just a human being. I've got my feelings back. And it's good that I can express them as they occur and not save them up for a later date, but be they good or bad, and then explode at people. So today, it's a, a gentle day. And that serenity prayer, God grant the grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. It's all about responding to life. And last night with a, a step meeting, all about step 10, doing a, a, an invent inventory of my defects on a daily basis and a gratitude list to show my upside. There is always a balance in life. So I need accept what is not changeable. Change what I can and have the wisdom to know the difference, just gently, and be there for other people today. It's not about me, it's about being part of life, celebrating life, and just doing it very gently in the moment of now.